morning and welcome everyone. It's so chaotic outside right now, but in here we get to worship an awesome God. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 says this, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So please, turn off your cell phones. So settle in. Let's get ready to worship and hear an insightful message. We are so excited that you are here with us today. Yes, we are. How are you guys doing this morning? Pretty good? All right. You guys ready to praise the Lord a little bit more? All right.
for change, Lord God, and we worship you in this place. Amen. Anybody got to be changed? They can fight again.
maker of chains. Amen. We come into this place to give glory and honor to him who strength is not an issue for you, Lord God. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There is no chain that you cannot break. There is no addiction that cannot be turned on its ear. You are the God of all glory and praise, and we worship you in this place. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If you've got a chain in your life this morning and you need it broken, we want to have the privilege to pray for you this morning. So there's going to be people down here that want to lift up your name and lift up your need. So come on down and have that chain broken this morning. If you got pain in your body, God is a healing God today, just like he was back a thousand, two thousand years ago. Wherever you want to go, our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is nothing that he cannot do. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them?
so it's sometimes really easy to, to just like, okay, that was awesome, move on. But Kim was just sensing that the Lord was saying that if there's people with breathing issues, whether it's asthma, whether it's long-lasting effects from COVID, you know, something with breathing, that we're going to spend some time. And if you need that, if you want to just, I'm going to ask you to take a step of boldness. It's really it's really easy, but like, yeah, I need that. Just sit back in your seat. And that's fine. God sees that. But if you need something with your breathing, again, whatever that is, COVID-related, whether it's asthma, you've got COPD, I don't know what you got. But if you're physically in this room, I just encourage you to come up. And if you just have, like, the gift of healing prayer, if you're a prayer warrior or whatever, let's just come up. Let's pray for those who have that. And if you're online listening, I know you can't make it up here to the front. But while we're praying, we're praying for you as well because we realize you're not able to physically be here. So we believe in God for you as well. So just while this time's going on, just lift your hands up at home and just receive this moment of prayer for healing. Even if this is later, it's not live. That's okay. Just receive what God's doing this morning. It's our breath and our love. It's a breath. I confirm that. The Lord was also speaking that to me. That he is pouring out his spirit. He's not dripping it. He's breathing a new life. He is coming to overcome all the sickness that is coming to shut up the voice of the saints of God. And then
back in December, and um, this song, every time I got scared with breathing and COVID, I would play this song on my phone just on repeat, and it just strengthened me so much. So even if like you don't feel this today, just keep keep speaking this song or singing this song to yourself. God is a healer. And he gives us our, our breath every day. So I just wanted to give a full testimony. Thanks. <laughs> For those who have no idea what's going on, we believe, you guys can be seated for a second, that's fine. You can leave the lights dim though. Um, I realize sometimes people have different experiences when it comes to church, but we do believe that God still is alive, active in his spirit, moves and speaks. His spirit being God himself speaks to everybody. It's not just the select anointed few, not just the pastors or you know, somebody who has the lead guitar, lead vocals, that he can hear from God, but that God is speaking to everybody. And that we believe that God is this morning, obviously, continuing to speak and reveal things. And so we're praying for healing. It's not like, oh, well, this is just this is the right thing to do because that sounds like a good idea. But when God says he's going to do something, when he says, come up and pray, that means God's about to do something. And when you hear God illuminating a testimony, it's like, hey, let me encourage you with that because sometimes healings and are miraculous. They happen instantly. Those are always the exciting ones, right? When you, all of a sudden, you're like, I have like a broken elbow, and then all of a sudden, your elbow's perfectly fine the next second after prayer. That's amazing. But sometimes prayers are, sometimes healing takes time. It's progressive. And sometimes it's really easy, no matter how God touches you, to become discouraged at the first sign of a symptom. And so don't lose faith and hope of what God was just doing in your life praying for that because of symptom. I, whether you need to do what Sandy was just saying and play that song, whether you just need to go to God, like, no, I refuse to accept the lies because it's very easy to fall back into things. And there's, I've seen that over and over again. This isn't wishful thinking. It's not positive thinking. It's faith in God and what he's doing. And so we're believing God is doing mighty things. And one last thing, somebody had a word, and apparently I'm just speaking on behalf of people this morning. So that's okay. Exodus 33 I'm going to start at verse 21, the specific verse is 22, but let me start at verse 21 of the ESV. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Verse 23, Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. There's a lot of belief that God, Moses had been asking God to, Can I see your glory? Can I see you, God? He said, if you see me, you'll die. But what's amazing is Christians, God allows us to see and experience his glory. Amen. And so he is lifting. We're able to this morning. I think that's why as you're praising, you're shouting, you're worshiping, you just get to experience God's glory this morning. I hope you felt his presence. It's still here. He is here no matter what, but this morning. So can we give God a big hand, clap of praise. And thank you, worship team, as always. Amazing, awesome job helping us to f just seek the face of God this morning. I want to just take a second, and I want to just share with you a quick... I was actually just listening to this message for a completely different reason. And I was like, actually, this is kind of interesting. So I was like, hey, you want to listen to the sermon with me? And we're listening to it, and this pastor, Carrie, had said something really interesting in the middle of that sermon. And this is maybe a little challenging for some of us, but he said... Until God has our money, until he has our wallet, or until we trust him with it, then it's not until then we're really trusting God. Of course, he says it all fancy, and I'm not going to go and preach, re preach a sermon, but sometimes it's really hard. It's one of the last things we can trust God with, especially today when we see the news headlines and we see oil, price, you know, price of oil or gas going up or whatever. But when we trust God with our money, we're really trusting God. And I think that is so true. And so this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity to feel like I just need to continue to respond to what God puts on my heart with my finances. We're not telling you what to give. We're not putting some crazy weight on you. We're not saying it's free to come in, but it's, it costs you to get out of here. We're just saying, what is God putting on your heart this morning? Will you trust him with that amount and just follow through? And if you want to do that, there's three ways you can give. There's offering envelopes. 
in the chairs in front of you. You can give cash or check that way. If you want to give digitally, you can do that as well. One is you can text Sunrise to the number right there on the screen, 833-345-5945. Or if you have the app or website, you can go on there and click the Donate tab. Even in the future, it doesn't have to be Sunday morning. You can click that, follow those prompts, and give that way. And then finally, if you are a guest here with us this morning, we just want to say thank you for being here and worshiping with us. We realize there's a lot of great churches in this community, a lot of great places to go. We're just glad and privileged that you decided to worship Jesus with us this morning. Hopefully you have had a great experience already. You're going to hear a great word. But if you would be comfortable to fill out a connection card, a get-to-know-you card right in this chair in front of you, you can put that in the box right there by those double doors. Or we'd love to meet you in person. If at the end of service you want to go out those double doors to the right, there's a countertop kitchen island that's a connection hub. You're not going to get a sandwich, but we just love to say hi. Thanks for being here. and love to get to know you a little more personally. And there's a spot on there. just want to you know if you have any kind of prayer requests, doesn't have to be breathing issues, but any prayer requests, we would love to pray for you. And that's kept completely confidential. It won't be out on emails or Facebook or Meta or whatever they're calling themselves, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, name every social media. It will not be on any of them. You're completely confidential. So love to have a chance to pray for you. And with that, let me pray for the offering. And then this guy who's trying to steal my thunder, he can't do it though. Should have wore brighter yellow or something. That way really stand out. It's already stolen. You'll hear about it. But first let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning for what you've already been doing. We thank you that you have moved and inspired and, and encouraged and healed and all these things you're doing this morning. We thank you. And now, Lord, as we respond, not by bribing you or feeling obligated, but out of love and faith, we give to you this morning. I ask that you would bless this offering. Use it to continue to advance your kingdom, the good news, the love of the one true God who says, I'm here for you and wants us to be saved, that people would hear that good news. Their lives would be changed and transformed. I ask that you bless each giver back. Just continue to pour out your love, your goodness, your favor in their life. Bless and reward their generosity and faithfulness, Lord. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And with that, can you give a warm welcome to Miss Erin as she talks about Buddy. <laughs> Good morning. morning. That was good. See, Kids Church, that's what we're looking for. I always tell them, like, good morning. They're like, "Eh." (laughs) Especially today, I lost my hour of sleep, totally forgot. I am pretty zonked this morning, but that's all right. We're here. So are you. Um, Today, we're going to take a little bit of um, a detour with BGMC, but it is connected, I promise. Um, Before I do that, I did want to update you. Um, We are still in the middle of our 21K challenge. We have two months left. Um, You guys have, as a church, we've raised over $15,000. So, yes, it is fantastic. We're about $5,600 short of our goal, but I know God provides, and and we were going to get there. So um, we have an opportunity as a church now to impact our world, and I'd like to share this video with you um, of just how we can do that. So just... Take a look with me. На даний момент я стати біженцем. Це дуже важко психологічно. Розказати не стільки свою історію, скільки те, що я відчуваю. Це зриви, це сирена. Це паніка і втечі. Це історія спільна для всіх українців. Але я хочу поділитися тим, що ти відчуваєш потім. Після цього легше. Тобі легше. Ти не чуєш зриви. Твоя дитина в безпеці. Ти втікла. Це позаду. Але потім це проходить. Стає сум. Сум такий, що ти розумієш, що те життя то ніколи не вернеться. Нікогда. І ти розумієш, яким ти був щасливим. Чи ти зробила правильне рішення в день, ти зібрала чемодан один і все. 
і все життя ти кинула. Ти забрала дітей. На сьогодні, я думаю, те її спати в теплі, щоб вона була в мене наїджена. І щоб вона була спокійна. От спокійна, і щоб вона мені усміхалася. Для мене це зараз от найважливіше. Я... Ти з цими думками засипаєш і прокидаєшся. Ти не знаєш, як тобі далі жити. Я вчора дивилась на всіх в чорному. Я про це подумала. Це моє бажання бути світлою і не здаватися. Ненавиділа рожевий цвіт все життя. Моя дочка ніколи не ходила в рожевий. Нікогда. Я так хочу. Це твоє внутрішнє стерження, бажання твоєї руки. Хтось віри людина пустить руки. Віра, що Бог мене ніколи не покине. І не покине мою країну. Немає іншого вибору. Ти мусиш в це вірити. video is of a refugee from the Ukraine crisis. Um, her name is Irina, um, and she was separated from her husband, who was forced to stay behind and fight for the Ukrainian army. Um, she and her daughter were able to get out of the country, um, and Convoy of Hope was able to give her the ability to contact her husband, let them, him know that they were safe, and also provide resources for her when temperatures are in single digits at night and her daughter as well. Um, but I just, I love her faith um, at the end of that. And I know it's a little hard to read and we'll put that up on our Sunrise page if you guys want to watch that again or share it. Um, but she says, um, belief is a feeling that God will ne never forsake me and my country. I have to believe in this. I have no other choice. Um, And it's, it's hard to put yourself into that crisis when we're, you know, at home with our, and wives, with your husbands, with your children. Um, and all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, she has to pack up her ch child, her suitcase, leave her husband behind, and just walk and find a place to go that's safe. Um, it's it's un unimaginable just trying to figure out and putting yourselves in their shoes. I'm thankful for my bed <laughs> and my, my warmth. Um, and I pray that we never have to go through that ourselves. But we are being able to partner with BGMC to give funds to Convoy of Hope that are going directly to Ukraine. Um, they, this is an update from Convoy of Hope. This is from Friday. They said two truck roads, <laughs> two truckloads of relief supplies were loaded at Convoy of Hope's World Distribution Center on Friday morning. Airlink, a nonprofit partner with Convoy for this crisis response, donated their service to, to provide transportation of 60 pallets of relief supplies, which will arrive in Europe to support refugees. Um, the stories of the Ukrainians are telling when they come over the border are getting increasingly worse every day. And this is from one of the service teams there. And they said the other night, over 20,000 people came through one border crossing alone during the overnight hours. A lot of people have the thousand yards there, and when they come across the border into Poland, they have no idea what kind of impact this is going to do to them. They are saying that this is the greatest migration crisis in the history of Europe since World War II. So as a church, we would love to be able to help in every way we can. I know a lot of people are looking for options of what can we do Um, even Dress a Girl is looking at how can we donate some of our dresses to some of these girls over there to at least get them some warm clothing. Um, so Buddy gives us that opportunity. And he's just a little wooden creature here, but <laughs> knowing that it could possibly give somebody a warm meal or it could give somebody just a, a safe place to be is an incredible feeling. Um, and it makes our world just a little bit closer to theirs. So, that being said, um, I was told by one of our kids to do summer versus, or spring versus fall, um, but then I was told by an adult that that seemed cheap, so I 
stacked it in our favor. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do um, adults on the blue side and kids on the green side. If you'd like to donate to BGM Seeds for it to go to Convoy of Hope for the Ukrainian people, you can go ahead and make any kind of check or anything out to Sunrise Church with BGMC in the memo. Anything that's collected today will go straight to the Ukrainian crisis. So, all right. You guys ready? Okay. Here, Ariana. It's heavy, I promise. Oh, you already got one. Well, then, I don't know. Here, get that one, too. <laughs> Hey church, VBS is coming up in a couple months, but in a couple weeks, we will be having our very first trivia night for 2022. So on March 18th at 7 p.m., right here in our sanctuary, we will have trivia night. Luke? So if you're like me and you hear trivia night and you sort of panic, and you think, <laughs> and you think I'm not very good at trivia, that's okay. So the way that we run this, is nothing but fun. You guys will have a good time. It is $10 at the door. But Just 10! 10 bucks, that's it. Throughout the night though, we have door prizes that we give away between each round. We've got auction items that you can go bid on. It's a silent auction, it's a good time. We have giveaways throughout the night. 50-50 raffle to help raise some money and give some, give some funds away. But again, if you're like me and you hear trivia, I kind of panic, don't. This stuff, the questions are fun. You're gonna have a good time. And you'll be with a team. This isn't like you're all alone. You'll be able to come bring your friends. What is it, Danny, a table of eight? Table of eight, we'll have okay. the big round tables in here. Well, it's eight people per table, so build your teams. If you come by yourself, yeah. you'll sit at a table with other people. That's cool, we are for that. But if you wanna build your own team, have a table, table of eight, come on out, it's $10 a person. And if you have any questions, come back to the hub and you can talk to me or you can come talk to Pastor Aaron. We'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Hello, church family. Just a friendly reminder that on March the 27th, the Missions Committee will be taking a special love offering for our missionary, Paul Clark. And his mission is building a church in Lechtenstein. So we are collecting the love offering on the 27th. And if you're unable to be here that Sunday, please put it in a little envelope for us, whether it be that Sunday or before. Just designate it on the missions line, whether it's for Paul, Paul Clark, or just Clark, maybe even love offering. We will know that it's going to this special funding. So thanks so much and see you then. Hello church, I'd like to give you a special invitation to attend the Praise and Worship Night this March 27th at 6 p.m. It's going to be an opportunity to dig a little deeper, to press into what God has for us, and to, with God's help, give the devil a black eye. Uh, we're going to raise the roof off this joint, that's the plan. So join us March 27th, 6 p.m. Thank you.
a full and ready prayer meeting without prayer. Yeah. I know, I haven't turned it around yet. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Poland has been taking in a vast majority of the refugees that have come out of the Ukraine. And in all the wonderful wisdom of idiotic multinational governments, the EU has decided to sanction them, I guess, because they didn't take in the Muslim refugees before. And instead, they're taking in their neighbors. So yeah, that's bad. So let, let's, let's, let's stack uh, insult on injury in the nation of Poland. Uh, but they are, despite the sanctions, continuing to open the borders to uh, their neighbors, the Ukrainians. So they definitely need prayer. Um, I know my extended family has a good chunk of Ukrainians in it, and, and uh, they're all pretty concerned about the things they're hearing coming out of home. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we could gather together today, that we could pray, that we could worship, that we could be challenged. Those are all good things. I ask you that you'd help us. We're going to do something that's maybe a little bit different this morning, and I just ask you that you would give us your guidance and help us to all take something out of it, Lord, that we can actually practically put to use every day in our lives. In your mighty name, amen. How many of you would like to be able to do the things that you're trying to do? <laughs> Have you ever had to do something that you didn't really know how to do very well? Was anybody a witness to that? couple times. I saw a great video the other day. I was just flipping through. I said, I don't have any normal TV. I watch a lot of YouTube, which means I have a very fractured, you know, media experience. But I watched these guys. How many of you have ever played Airsoft? I know some of our youth have, right? And you're all, yeah, and you're out there with your Airsoft gun. So it was all these gamers, all these young men gamers that were standing an Airsoft match against two ex-SAS officers from the British Army. How many of you know that these guys figure, we got you outnumbered, we got all kinds of airsoft firepower, and they're out in the, actually in a build, there's some set of buildings that they're fighting in. And you're watching this video, and these SAS guys are just cleaning their clock. I mean, these guys are figuring out how to get the little BBs to go around a corner. It was the wildest thing. This guy keeps doing this and picking off somebody you could barely see on the camera. And it was like, they just could not. They were trying to mount these assaults, and these guys were just cutting them down again and again and again. All of a sudden, they, these gamers started to think they knew less than Call of Duty could teach them. <laughs> right? So, I mean, you have two guys that know, they've actually trained, they know how to handle a military problem versus, it. would you like to have two Marines standing against them, Chris? It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? You know, you know your stuff, right? So now we've been talking about this idea of discipleship. Again, what makes discipleship harder? What makes discipleship easier? And finally, last week, we talked about making a choice. How many of you would like to actually kind of know what it is you're choosing? I'm going to be a disciple. What does it look like? Am I going to be this guy with an airsoft gun? You're going to hand me my airsoft Bible, and I'm going to run into the world swinging around and hope to do my best? Or are we actually going to have some sort of marching orders? That's what we want to talk about today. What it looked like when Jesus actually started this process, process of disciples, discipleship with those that he gathered around him. And I'm going to ask you first to turn to John, the fifth chapter. John, the fifth chapter. And what I want to do is actually start in the very beginning of this process and start looking at the original model. Can we? John 5. 19 through 21. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Now, I want you to think about that. We'll have another verse a little bit like it in a moment. But think about that for a second. How many of you have ever considered that Jesus, in his own mind, was a bit of a disciple? I know. You can look at the Bible and say, well, Pastor, it never says, I am a disciple from Jesus. You're right, it doesn't. But what do you see here? Jesus is the second disciple. Member of the Trinity, God the Son. How many of you think that as God for all eternity, he can do what he wants? He could come and live large and do it his way, and, and yet he says, listen, everything you watch me do, I do what Dad did. I learned from his choices, his value, his model. 
And what you see in Jesus walking around on planet Earth is exactly the representation of God the Father. Is that not discipleship at its highest level? I know God the Father and God the Son are co-equal. They are both God for all eternity. And yet, he's not just doing it his own way. Now, have anybody here ever run into somebody who says that, well, I'm a Christian, but then they go on to behave in ways that just don't seem to fit? It's kind of like Sesame Street. One of these things just doesn't belong here. One... And you go, I don't get it. Now, we can all be judgmental about that. That's not my point. I'm not trying to go to somebody. I'm just saying you, you, you watch behavior and you go, okay, this doesn't even seem to be a good human approximation of Christianity, let alone anything that's remotely biblical. We have to look first to the first model and say whatever it is that we're going to be as disciples, it's probably going to look like the one who showed us how to do it first. Does that seem reasonable? How many of you have ever learned a trade of some sort? A trade of some sort. How many of you just, you know, they threw you a set of tools and said, good luck? <laughs> did, did they bribe you? Good luck. <laughs> How many of you actually had to watch somebody do it, learn about doing it, start to do it yourself, see if you can do it well enough to teach others, right? It's part of the process. So as disciples, Jesus said, first of all, watch me. Now, so often we get into the miracles, right? Everybody wants to be able to see how he did the miracles. That'd be cool. How many dead people have you raised? Yeah, I'm still at zero. Okay, would that be cool? Yeah, it would. Uh, how many of you have uh, prayed for somebody and they got up off the bed and they did not have to go have that surgery? I've seen a few people have at least participated in groups that have prayed. We have no idea whose faith God answered. Maybe it was the person on the bed. But I mean, some amazing things have happened. Isn't that some fun to be able to do? But I'll give you something that's even more practical and everyday than that. And that's not trying to limit prayer. I, I can't encourage you enough. Come out for push prayer on Monday nights, 6.30 to 7.30. And begin to pray for people and see what God can do for them. It's awesome stuff. But do you realize that so much of the discipleship that we need to walk is we need to look at Jesus. How, do you know, how many of you know that Jesus had to answer questions about relationships, about priorities, about ethics, about the way you interact with other human beings, about, 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 this is the everyday stuff. Discipleship is not just the religious stuff you do. You go to work, your attitude shows who you're following. How many of us have ever thought about that? How many of us go and we get in a bad and we have a bad day and we just think, well, that's just me? Yeah, but who are we following? We may not follow perfectly, but we should look back to what Jesus did. Go a little farther forward in Scripture. John chapter 8, verse 28. John chapter 8, verse 28. Jesus said to them, then Jesus said to them, sorry, Mr. Word, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. And he says the same thing He just did. And then I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please Him. That's a pretty big statement. As he spoke those words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And I want you to see how this all hangs together. The first thing he tells them is, You can trust me because I'm reliable. He doesn't say those words, but he says, Everything the Father does, I do. When you are looking at my life, you are looking at the life of God. Can I give you a big challenge? That's what discipleship aims at. I know. We're not Jesus. We're not going to be as good as Jesus. We're not going to get it all right like Jesus. I sure haven't. But how many of us could try to be a little bit more like God than maybe we do on a daily basis? Yeah, and you notice you look at people who raise your hand, you're talking about people who love Jesus and had a relationship with him a long time. So again, this isn't a matter of we are all hopeless losers. 
And then there's this one good guy over here. No, no, no. We're all on this journey together. And some of us are, are a little bit farther along than others. That's okay. I, how many of you would like to be able to look at your friends and relatives and say, I'm reliable? Not just, I'll show up because I said I would help you move. That's part of it. But I'm reliable. If you act like you see me acting, you're on pretty good grounds. Now, does that sound proud? Does that sound prideful? How many of you say that kind of sounds prideful to look at somebody and say, "Do it my way, and you'll be okay." Didn't Paul say that? Follow me, as I follow Christ. So we see Jesus say, follow me, I'm reliable, I do what God does. Exactly. And then you see Paul, a disciple of Jesus, say, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, how many of you know that the, the chain didn't stop there? The people that Paul treated should have been able to say, follow me as I follow Paul's example, as he follows Christ, as Christ follows God. The train is all linked together. Just because you're not the engine doesn't mean you're not part of the journey. So first of all, in John 8, we see this idea of reliability. And he says, listen, because I've walked this discipleship route, I know I'm inserting language there, but I think you can find where I'm going. For I always do the things that, that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed. Many people said, wow, we like what we see in Jesus. We like how he's interacting with the public. We like the way the power of God flows through him. We like the way he says he's going to do X, and he does X. We like that. If that's how God is, that's the God I want to follow. I'm in. Do you realize when we go out into the world, part of what we do as a disciple is we show the world who God is. Because I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of people in the world have no clue. They have vague ideas about God that have been cooked up by TV, movies, God knows what. And they, they come in and they say, well, the God is just always love. God is always loving. I mean, if you know, sometimes you can love your kids and still punish the daylights out of them if they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, I mean, it can happen. And then there's always, oh, God is always justice. Yes, God is always just. But in his mercy, he often doesn't give us anywhere near what we deserve. God is bigger than one element. So he says, this is who I am. They believe. And then he says, if you, study, if you abide in my word, what does it mean? And this is not mainly a sermon about reading your Bible more. But how many of you know what abiding in the word of God is? David. Obedience to the principles found there. Okay, that applies to some other things. Anybody else? Ah, be connected enough to me. How many of you have ever thought, I think God says something about this, but I don't know what it is? Let's be honest. You ever thought, I know I'm supposed to do something, but I'm not totally sure what it is? Okay, be connected. Anybody else? Tim. Oh, apply it to your life. So when I read the Bible, it's not just a story of a galaxy long, long ago and far, far away. It's meant to be something that, oh, might actually have to do with the people, the relationships, the situations I'm in right now. What does the Bible say? Now, I will guarantee you, the Bible does not tell you whether to choose the Wheaties or the Fruit Loops. I mean, don't tell me. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that the Wheaties are better. Stop. Okay? The Bible does not literally answer every single question of your day. Go left or right on the road. But it sure gives you an idea how your attitude's supposed to be while you're choosing left and right. And ah, out the window is probably not part of it. Apply every day. If you abide in my word, if you're daily connected to it so that you know how to apply it to your life, and, and you start seeing God do this, the obedience to the principles. Good! You are my disciples indeed. Okay, so here's a point. Um... I, I've never, I don't think I've done this in a very long time. This is the teacher and me coming out. But I'm going to get a board. And there's a reason for this board. Not because you want to see my writing. My writing is illegible, okay? It is what it is. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more legible today. Abide. In. The. Word. And the reason I'm doing this is, when I'm done... As an act of odd commitment, how many of you have your phone with you? Is it a dumb question? How many of you left your phone at home on the nightstand? 
Yeah, right. Yeah, like one did? Oh, hey, well, two or three of you did. How many of you have it with you? You've got it somewhere. It's in your purse. It's in your pocket. It's in your phone. Okay, when we're done, I want you to come up and take a picture of this. You can use the picture for one of a few things. You can say, this man has the worst handwriting on the planet. And now you'll have evidence of that. My pastor actually has the worst handwriting on the planet. You can have a good laugh out of it. On the other hand, maybe you'll be able to read it, and you'll actually have some notes to take with you. Here's one thing that disciples do. You want to be the British SAS guy and not the crazy airsofter running around getting lot slaughtered? Abide in the word. That's a, the beginning of that process. And when you do that, the truth shall set you free. If you don't know the truth. People say, I, I believe in the science. I'm not anti-science. Science is cool. How many of you love the way that science can figure some stuff out? You know, wow, that is so neat. Science is cool. How many of you know science is done by scientists? And scientists are human beings. And they have a desire for job promotion. They have a, job, a desire to get funded. They have a desire for all that. They're not bad people. They're just like you and me. And sometimes they kind of extrapolate and exaggerate about facts. I know, crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. I heard somebody actually say, I thought this was hilarious. All of the word, and again, I'm not somebody that's saying the world isn't changing. But how many of you know that climate, climate scientists have a current 0% accuracy rating on all of their predictions? Zero. If you go back as far as 1972, they said an ice age was coming and we're all freezing to death. And now, 50 years later, we're all going to parboil off the planet for global warming. They have no idea. They're smart human beings. I'm not saying they're not. But they currently have a 0% accuracy rating. The truth shall set you free. You have to dig. Third scripture. We're getting there. John 13, 12 to 17. Jesus is going to start this command process and saying, what you're seeing in me, you need to do. This goes from model to command. John 13, 12 says, So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? Now, anybody here, and I'm not suggesting it, we're not planning to do it at the end, don't worry, I'm not going to take off my shoes. Anybody here ever been in a foot washing service? How many of you have never, you've never done that, never been in one, never heard about it, rather not? Okay. It's a little different. You know, it's, it's, it's odd. It's not really that hard to wash somebody else's feet. It really isn't. I mean, I suppose if they had really bad gym shoe foot, it'd be a little hard, but hey, at least you'd be making it better. You know the hard thing about a foot washing service is having your own feet washed. It's a really strange process. You think, oh, this is easy. What's it going to tickle a little bit? It's actually emotionally kind of hard to sit there and watch somebody do that. Now imagine having the most famous, influential person you can imagine. I don't know who that is. For you, that might be a leader. That might be an athlete. That might be a music star. I don't know. I don't know who fits in your really cool person you know, line. Imagine them coming and cleaning your room. Washing your feet. Fixing your car. <laughs> Would you feel a little strange? That's exactly the emotional impact with these disciples sitting around with their master. And he washes their feet. And then he says, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. The key truth in discipleship is that you should do what God has done to you. So, what has God done for you? I'm not trying to make this a testimony service. We don't have time to hit it all. We heard Brother John tell us about God working in his throat. Praise the Lord. 
I'm still praying for you that all those things yeah, are confirmed. What has God done for you? Aaron, forgiveness. What has God done for you? Healed us. Give you life. Save your life. Giving you family. You know, maybe sometimes we need to stop and think a little bit more about it. Yeah. God's done a lot. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So we look at the example of Jesus Christ first, who was a disciple, a perfect disciple, if you want to use that term, of God the Father, the first member of the Trinity. He did what God did. You see Jesus get in a Pharisee's face? God would have done that. You know, you see, how many of you are glad that there's a, there's a spot for that somewhere? You know, there are sometimes people you got to get in their face. Okay, and if you see, you know, if you see Jesus raise the dead and interrupt a funeral, I always, that would be really cool to do. Would it? Do we believe it can happen? Or do we read the book going, long ago, the fairy godmother came. Jesus had the, the understanding that God created life. What's the big deal about restoring life to a dead corpse? Nothing, really. Okay. So we see that Jesus was the perfect disciple, and we're called to follow the perfect disciple. And then he gives us a rather long text. And, and you'll forgive me for the long text, but it's got some great stuff in it. Last text, Matthew 10, verse 5. But we go and read a while. Matthew 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How many of you realize this is really the first time Jesus sends his guys out on on-the-job training? They didn't just sit in an academy somewhere and study a text. They didn't read the rule book for the video game, guys, but never bother to play the game. They actually did it. Go out. I'm not going to hold your hand. Whoa. Go out and live out this thing called discipleship in the real world. Now, he, first he set some pretty easy parameters for them. He said, go to people that are like you. Go to people that speak the language that you speak, that share the culture that you have, that understand kind of the playbook you're talking out of. He didn't immediately send them to South America, Antarctica, he set them at home. And he said, as you go. Oh, here's one of the first ones. Disciples go. No way to say it otherwise. Again, he may not send you to China. He may not send you to Atlanta. Although it's warmer there than here. But he's going to send you out into your world. If your faith is mostly just lived in your four walls and in your house, in your heart, You've missed the point. Or you haven't got the greater point of discipleship yet. Go. Notice there's no model here for sit. And as you go, preach. What? I have sometimes people look at me and say, I don't know how you talk in public. Well, I've done it for a very long time. Whether I'm good at it or not good at it, I'm used to it. How many of you, the idea of getting up in front of a hundred people and having to do a presentation makes you a little nervous? Or a thousand people? Or It really doesn't matter, does it, Pastor Dan? Two people, five thousand people, it's all the same thing. And I don't, it, it really is, it, it's all the same thing. And it has nothing to do with your talent or your ability. I am as capable of saying something stupid in front of five thousand people as I am too. And probably have done both. But why does it say preach? You have God's word that you're supposed to be abiding in, issue number one. And preaching is simply the art of telling that message to somebody again. I guarantee you, if you run up to somebody on the street and you say, Psalms 52 says, 
They're not listening to you. They're going to say, you're weird. Get away from me. But if you have a conversation with somebody and some principle from Psalm 52 pops into your brain, and you start saying, you know, it's really interesting. I read once. And you start telling the story. You realize you don't always have to quote it. You don't always have to get the biggest one full of dust and shoo, to impress somebody. Just tell them what you know. And that really is the art. Yeah, there might be more to public speaking than that, but preach. Go preach saying. It even gives you the beginning of the sermon. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The reason you listen to the word is because you believe the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The reason you preach the word is because you believe that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If God is long, long ago and far, far away and hasn't had anything to do with your life today, you're never going to preach to anybody. Because what would it matter? How many of you have ever been pinned into a long discussion of ancient history with Pastor Jeff? <laughs> Please don't, Ben Danny. Yes, I have. Most of you know, right? I mean, why? Because you don't care what the Romans did 2,000 years ago. You don't care. And that's fine. I'm weird. It's the way it is. One of my brother-in-laws is actually an ancient, histo ancient history PhD candidate. I've had some fascinating conversations with him. He has to put up with it. He's family. <laughs> Go! Preach! The kingdom of God is at hand. Then it goes on. These are, these are toughies. Heal. Well, pastor, I don't have that gift. God has the gift. You're just connecting the person to God. Well, Pastor, I've never prayed for anybody and they've gotten better. Well, then don't hang out your shingle, but pray anyway. <laughs> right? You wouldn't even necessarily start going on an, uh, on an orbit as a healing evangelist if nobody ever gets better. Heal. You're make me, I'm going to start laughing. I hear you. <laughs> Cleanse. Whether cleansing means, in this case it says cleanse the leper, so that would be another issue of healing. But how many of you realize that there are people that are oppressed by, by demon spirits? And I'm not getting weird. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to see has nothing to do with demons. How many of you know that? Most of the weird people are just weird. They're just weird. They don't require demons to be weird. They're just weird. And, and you know, some people have actual psychological disturbances that have nothing to do with demonic activity. I'm not a believer that stands there and says every time something appears out of the ordinary... There must be a demon. Didn't say that. You didn't hear it here. But there are real demonic activities in the world. There are real demonic oppressions in the world. There are things that go on that are not always scientifically explainable and medically treatable. As a disciple of the one who is following God Almighty, should healing throw you? Should cleansing that which is corrupted throw you? It should not. And notice, remember, these are disciples on the early part of their job, not the late part. These weren't the guys just before Jesus hit the cross, after three years of extended training. This is the beginning of the journey. Raise the dead. As I've said, my, my, my record is still zero, so I'm, I'm, we're on the same plane, unless you've got stories you haven't told me yet. I'm going to go with cleanse, this one cast out. And that has to do with casting out demonic influences. Did you realize that that's something that a disciple should be able to do? Now somebody's going to look at me and say, well, no, pastor, this is just these 12. This is just Jesus and these 12. And we're not those 12. We're not in that original inner group. Jesus could certainly not expect me to heal, cleanse, raise, and cast out. No way. That was just them. Do you realize that Jesus said that to other disciples in the wider group as well? Between now and the time that he ascends? Yeah, so this is obviously something that disciples do. Here's another one. And I'm going to comment on something Pastor Brian said. It was actually pretty good. He got the quote from somebody else. Freely you, you have received, freely give. Now, how many of you know that is not only a financial statement? Freely you've received people's time, give it. You've received people's forgiveness, give it. You've received people's help, give it. 
yeah, freely you've received God's blessing and other people's pouring into your life financially feel able to give it. So give. Disciples give. It may be that what you can give right now isn't a whole lot of money, or maybe you don't have a whole lot of time, but what you do have, be willing to give. Generosity is not something that comes from politics. Politics says, I will use the power of law and force to take from you that which you do not want to give. I will give it to other people, and I will take the credit for so doing. That's politics. Generosity says, I will freely give that which I have earned to you to be helpful without worrying about credit. Freely you've received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver or copper in your money belts nor bag for your journey, no two tunics nor sandals nor staffs, for a worker, a worker is worthy of his food. I'm not going to say it that one because I talked about it last week. Not being overly worried about the provisions of life. Doesn't mean you're spendthrift or stupid, but you're not constantly obsessing with, with what money will be there later. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Now, this is a toughie because, again, this is the 12, I know, and they're on a specific missions journey. But disciples don't waste time. How many of you here probably have an advanced degree in time wasting? Just along with me. Now, here's the funny thing. The people you just saw raise your hand, a lot of them are fanatically busy people. They're not lazy. Wasting time doesn't necessarily mean that you're just sitting there doing nothing because you don't care. You can be doing a lot of things. Have you ever helped somebody and realized as you're doing it that you're wasting your time? Have you ever given money to somebody that got the will work for food sign and you know they're not? And you give it to them and you realize you're wasting your time. <laughs> That's right. How many of you understand that God has sent us into this world to represent him? And while it is wonderful and noble to help somebody, there are limits to all things. And sometimes it's time to move on. Part of growing up as a mature individual is learning when that time is, isn't it? Part of us as a disciple is, I don't want to waste the time God has given me. I only have so long to pray. I have only so long to preach. I have only so long to interact with anybody. Now, I don't want to go too far on this. If you're younger, admittedly, the odds are in your favor. How many younger people do we have here? Now, notice I'm being really easy. You might say, I'm 47. I'm young. Good! Raise your hand. Be proud of it. But how many younger people do we have here? Come on, put them up. Come on. Yeah, I know where you are. I know where some of you are. Good for you. You're younger people. That's great. You have got a long time ahead. But please, for your own sake, it will be about this long before you're here. What's that? Somebody said, yeah. It doesn't take very long, right? Boom, you're there. And you go, what happened? And you can't ever get those times back. And I'm not bad. I don't feel like you're decrepit or anything. I mean, I might look it. I don't know, but I don't feel it. But at the same time, I realize that there is less time ahead of me now than there is for you that are younger. Don't waste time. Have fun. Enjoy the life that God's given you. I'm not saying be super serious and bummed out at all times. No! But it won't take you long. And you'll be here. And there's some of you out there that are going, looking at me, going, what are you talking about? You, you'll wait till you get here. Okay. I get it. I just went to Florida and I hung out with retirees for an entire week. It was fun. I'm not that far from it. Don't waste time. Yes, you are. Oh, well, thank you, Pastor Danny. I, I, you're a kind man. All right. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise. 
as serpents and harmless as doves. A disciple tries to think about how to use the knowledge that you have. The advantage of getting older is that you might have survived long enough to get some knowledge. True? Now, can you use what you have? Or is it like a hoard? I don't understand. I'm not picking on you or anybody that you know. Please forgive me, but I don't understand hoarders. I don't. I, I don't like tripping over stuff. I mean, I, I, I understand that there can be lots of reasons for it. I'm not here to pick on you if you're there or you know somebody. I just don't get it. What's the good of having every newspaper that you got back till from 1957 to 1985 if you never look at them? What good does it do to keep old car parts from cars you don't have anymore? What good does it do to keep, you know, the, the lasagna you made 47 years ago? Get rid of it! Get rid of it. Be wise. Use your age to advantage. I got to say this. I'm going to get in trouble. Well, suck it up. Um, yeah, I know. That's next. I'll get there. Wise. Folks that are like me, a little older, you can retire from your job. You can't retire from Jesus. If you're retiring from Jesus, you've done it wrong. Well, I don't go to this time because there's too many kids there and they're loud. Go there anyway! Amen. Why? Because kids need what you have. I know. It's annoying. It can be difficult. They can make it hard to hear. Our ears aren't as good as they were. Mine aren't. And it gets annoying when there's a lot of blah, 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 blah. Don't bark at everybody all the time. Get off my lawn. Stop it. Stop it. Yes, teenagers might be sometimes a little bit of a stress for those of us who are older. Sometimes. <laughs> it's been too long. They're not that old. Anyway... How many of you know, I, I, and I run into this all the time, I know my parents have said this, and if you're watching online, and you know my parents, just deal with it. <laughs> but, but my parents have said so many people they know, they, they, they go to Florida, and they just don't go to church for five or six months a year, because they're in Florida. They're on vacation, yeah, we don't, stop it! Be wise, be involved. Second, harmless. How many times do we not act in a harmless way because we really want to get that last dig in? You don't have a right. Did I just say that? Neither do I. You don't have a right. Yes, you might have been hurt. I don't deny that. You probably have been hurt because we live in a real world that says hurtful, mean things. And people have treated you wrong for their own benefit. And that's bad on them. Don't be as bad as them. Be as harmless as doves. You may have to say things out of wisdom that can be painful. Have you ever heard of the, the saying, speaking the truth in love? Find a way to make it harmless, shall we? That would be benefit, beneficial. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to Gentiles. That stuff's happened in the world right now, folks. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. It is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. There's one. Trust Don't say, I can't talk because I don't know what to say. Open your mouth. Put some voice to it. And trust that the word that you're in is going to come out when the Spirit needs it to. Now a brother will deliver a brother to death, and a father his child, and a children will raise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you'll be hated for all by my name's sake. Oh, Pastor, you're so cheery. We'll get there. Hold on. But he who endures to the end will be saved. 
when they persecute you in this city, notice that's a when. It will happen. When people don't like what you're saying, flee to another. For assuredly I say to you that you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher. Be like Christ. Now, do yourself a favor. Don't be like the internet, Jesus. Don't be like the Wikipedia, Jesus. How many of you know that a lot of people have boiled down Jesus into something that was far less than he really was? Be like the Jesus that's revealed in the Word. And if you say, well, I don't understand enough, then back up into the Old Testament because he said, what I've seen the Father do, I've done fully. Get the picture of who he is. Be like your teacher. If you're called into an airsoft match with two former SAS troopers, know your stuff. What's that? Take Chris with you. That will help. <laughs> you want to be an individual that says, I know what I'm supposed to do. Here's some of it. Abide in the word. Remember what God's done for you. Know that you'll have to go out of your comfort zone. Know that you're going to have to talk about God. There's no vow of silence for disciples. You may be asked to bring God's power of healing, cleansing, raising the dead, or casting out demonic influences into your life. Expect that that's a real possibility. You're going to have to be generous. Don't waste time. Become wise. Work at being harmless. Trust God and be like your teacher. Now, how many of you on that list, there's something you can work on? Now, I would be a little nervous if you were sitting in this room and going, I have no idea what you're talking about, Pastor. I have got all these mastered. Good for you. But I'm guessing that just like me, there's a few there that you can master. Yeah. Start there. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Lord Jesus, I realize that the things that I have written on this whiteboard are not anointed or, or specific other than the fact that they come out of your word. And because they come out of your word, Lord, this is practical stuff that we can do. The Lord Jesus, I have to admit, we have some of us here who have preached. We have folks that have been pastors and missionaries and, and served in various evangelists and done great things. We might say we've already preached. God, you didn't call us to just do it professionally or just do it for a time. You call us to be people that can speak your word. So, God, I pray that we will be. Lord Jesus, I, I remember the days in school when my daughter would be approached and thrown into arguments for people that didn't believe you. And at that time, she could stand her ground and preach the word. It doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter what our training was in college or life. We should abide in the word. And God, I think a lot of us as believers, we don't even, we, we like the idea of being healed or knowing that God's power is there, but trying to be Johnny on the spot, Susie on the spot, and figure out what healing, cleansing, casting out demons really looks like. God, it's part of discipleship. It's expected. It's normative. Lord, we can all learn to be wise. We can all ask that you shave off the rough edges and help us to be harmless. God, I ask that you touch us. In the end, God, I ask you that you would help us to be like Christ. Lord, I mentioned Paul's statement, follow me as I follow Christ. God, I wish I could always say that with great confidence about myself. I have to admit there are places in my day and in my life that I wouldn't want anybody to follow me into. Lord Jesus, that's why it's a journey. That's why discipleship isn't a magic pill we take and we're all better now. It's a journey. 
So God, wherever we are today, let us step out. Let us do this thing. And we're going to talk about some of these things as we move forward. And Lord, you're going to help us learn how to do them. Lord, many of us already raised our hand and said, yeah, there's something on this list I'm not particularly good at. Okay. Let us start with that one. And Holy Spirit, if in that verse, that passage in Matthew, you said that we didn't even need to worry about the words we were going to say, that the Holy Spirit was going to speak through us, then Lord, we don't need to worry about how all of that's going to be. Let us start with what we know, as little as it may be. And let us abide in the Word and show us where you need us to, to know things so we can grow in that from there. I ask this in your mighty name. Now, Pastor Doug is going to, and team, not Pastor Doug, solo, Pastor Doug and his great team are going to give us a final piece of music. I told you if you had your phone, I'm guessing because you know, I see what a lot of you post on Facebook, that you figured out how to use the camera on your phone. <laughs> I've got mine. Come down and take a picture of it. Then you can't say, well, I forgot. You may forget every dumb story I told. You may forget where the scripture is. You'll have stuff to work with. Pastor Doug.
God's called us to get it done. Amen? Called us to get it done. Let's go get it done. God bless you today.